Next on Newsmax Prime, San Francisco, the city by the bay, and a sanctuary city for illegals. There's new controversy over that policy in the wake of a young woman's fatal shooting there last week. We'll discuss what needs to be done. Then, what qualities are you looking for in a president? A polling group has a new survey out, and the results may surprise you. And imagine the Russian surprise when they discovered they had been double-crossed by a double agent. We'll meet that unlikely spy. Newsmax Prime is next. Welcome to Newsmax Prime. I'm J.D. Hayworth of prime interest tonight, the shocking murder of a young woman in San Francisco, sparking new debate about the unwillingness of major cities to enforce immigration law and the Obama administration's assistance with that de facto amnesty. 32-year-old Catherine Steinle was out on a waterfront sto stroll with her father last week when authorities say she was attacked by Francisco Sanchez, a repeat drug offender and an illegal immigrant who had been deported five times. Sanchez told police he was in San Francisco because he knew he would not get deported. That's because San Francisco is a sanctuary city. Critics of that policy insist that the political leaders there have Ms. Steinle's blood on their hands. But San Francisco Sheriff actually praised the sanctuary policy on CNN. Sheriff, does being a sanctuary city make San Francisco safer or more dangerous? It makes us safer. I firmly believe it makes us safer. We're a world-renowned city with a large immigrate, immigrate, uh, immigrant population. Okay. And of that population uh, is a population that is also here undocumented. For a law enforcement perspective, we want to build trust with that population. And our sanctuary city and other attendant laws have allowed us to do that. Ross Mercurimi, the sheriff, trying to spit out some rationale for sanctuary policy. Uh, our panelists would disagree. We welcome in via Skype from Washington, D.C., Dan Stein, the president of FAIR, or Federation for American Immigration Reform. Also joining us from San Francisco on the phone, my old pal from Radio Days at KSFO. Now she's in Sonoma County at KSRO. Uh, that's Melanie Morgan. Dan, let's begin with you. Uh, you guys didn't mince any words. You say... President Obama, Governor Jerry Brown, the California legislature, every city and county official in San Francisco are unindicted co-conspirators in the murder of Kate Steinle. Well, what a, what a sad event. What a sad and, un, and an unfortunate thing that never should have happened. But in the end, we know that the Obama administration and their political allies in California and the ACLU have created an atmosphere where immigration law enforcement is considered both unimportant and, and not supportable. You heard the local sheriff. We have argued for some time that what the ACLU is trying to do in push state and local police to not cooperate with federal immigration authorities with immigration customs enforcement is tantamount to a, you know, a, a jeopardizing of the public safety and public security. And we see now every week somewhere in the country Illegal aliens who've been deported two, three, four times, five times or more, who then are winding up killing people, getting involved in very serious violent felonies. And the Obama administration itself has been a wrecking ball. I mean, the audacity of the administration to try to blame the GOP for not passing their big amnesty bill, and that's why Ms. Steinle was unfortunately murdered. It, it, if it, if it would be funny if it wasn't such a tragedy. I mean, here you have an administration which has done an administrative amnesty under the pretense of claiming they don't have the resources. They're not deporting almost anybody. They've completely, they've dismissed cases that were pending before courts, and now they're telling state and local authorities, you don't need to worry about criminal aliens, you can release them, as is obviously evidenced by the fact that this guy had been uh, had been released and he and speaking been and, and speaking of what's been going on on the ground there in San Francisco and surrounding area really throughout the state of California Melanie on your radio program you're trying to hold people's feet to the fire what are you hearing from officials is anybody willing to talk to you about their embrace of sanctuary policies 
Well, the short answer is no, J.D. They have not been willing to come forward and defend the policies that I believe is responsible for the murder of this beautiful young woman, Kate Steinle, in San Francisco. What most people don't understand is that there are 30 counties and municipalities in California that have adopted sanctuary status for illegal immigrants, and there's not only 30 cities and counties in California, but 300 across the country. You may, in fact, be living in a sanctuary city and not realizing it. A lot of people need to be held accountable for this, but, for instance, Sonoma County Sheriff Steve Freitas, uh, I invited him to come on the air yesterday, and I got some messages back that he uh, was w- not willing to be, uh, on, you know, in the same sentence as Kate Steinle. So I had to promise not to make any reference to that. And then finally, at the end of the evening, he he canceled his appearance today. So these lawmakers and and the uh, law enforcement officials who are responsible for catch and release or sanctuary status are not not coming forward and talking about it, including Lieutenant Governor Gavin Newsom, who uh, was the then mayor of San Francisco who proposed sanctuary status. By the way, uh, he is the same politician who broke the law by actually engaging in gay marriages, which, of course, um, started the ball rolling all across the country. And Nancy Pelosi, we haven't heard from Nancy Pelosi. She was also responsible with Gavin Newsom of pushing this forward, the sanctuary city status, and... Well, silence on their end. Meantime, Melanie and Dan, there seems to be finger pointing going on between ICE and the San Francisco Sheriff's Office. Take a listen to what officials from both agencies had to say, and then we'll get your reaction on the backside. ICE had sent a request over to San Francisco Sheriff's Office saying that they wanted to be notified when this suspect was going to be released from their custody. And unfortunately, that particular law enforcement agency has a policy in place that says they will not honor those ICE notifications. We need a legal instrument. A high majority of the counties in California believe the same thing, as well as well over 300 cities in the United States. Sheriff. All ICE needs to do is to provide us that legal instrument. Ross Mercurimi, always trying to dodge law enforcement. We've got about two and a half minutes left. Melanie, since you're on the ground out there, we've seen Mercurimi do some weird things uh, during his, quote, stewardship as sheriff of San Francisco. There is always an insistence not to enforce immigration law and claim some sort of rationale that that is lawful. Will that at long last fall apart? And we're taking a look at a map right now. States with sanctuary cities and indeed a majority of states in our union have this nutty policy of sanctuary cities. Your take, Melanie. Well, let me just first of all say that you are right about Sheriff Ross Mercurimi. He is disgraceful. This is a man who's actually been convicted of domestic battery against his wife. So I don't know why we should take him seriously, except for the fact that he is still sheriff of the city and county of San Francisco. But it's not just Mercurimi, and it, it, and it's not just ICE. It's everybody's fault. There, it, The whole system is flawed. It is disgusting, and it is resulting in the real murders of people. And it's time that uh, California and the rest of the countries reclaim their cities against this failed, failed policy. And, in fact, today, one of the things that I was happy to hear is that a California lawmaker is actually making the first move to crack down on the sanctuary status uh, in San Francisco and the rest of the state. And so we there. will keep an eye on that, Melanie. Let me get to Dan because we got about 45 seconds. Dan, in Washington, Republicans have to take a measure of responsibility because a lot of the establishment wants to dodge this question there, doesn't it? No, there's legislation in the House. It's actually gone through Judiciary Committee, uh, Bob Goodlatte, uh, that would actually close this loophole as well as Pete's, uh, Jeff Sessions in the Senate. You know, but listen, in the end, it's about federal leadership. Uh, the federal authorities have watched as these local jurisdictions have passed these non-cooperation resolutions, and under this administration, there's been no response. It's up to DHS to fight these jurisdictions and say you will honor you will honor ICE detainers as you have for decades past. And we will have to leave system. it there. Dan Stein, Melanie Morgan, our thanks. We'll get back to you soon on this important topic. Coming up. As GOP hopefuls fight for the top spot, a new poll looks at what qualities voters think are most important in a presidential candidate. Plus, more trouble for Bill Cosby, as newly released documents say he admitted getting drugs to give to women he sexually pursued. And this man may not look like James Bond, 
But this average American played a dangerous double game with the Russians. We'll have his story and much more when Newsmax Prime continues.